Hello everyone, this is Vignesh and today I am starting by preparing a short lecture on what algorithms are all about. So we are going to talk about programming. Okay. So most of them uh, have, my first question is that is ever, has anyone of you ever tried writing algorithms? I think there will be some who have not yet tried and directly moved on to programming. So for them, doing program with, even before knowing algorithm is quite difficult. Okay. So we'll straight on move on to what algorithms are all about. Okay. So basically when I'm talking about algorithms, I am talking about writing sequential steps to run a program. Okay. So what algorithm actually does. Okay. So we'll take an example. So if you are making, let's say you are solving a math problem. Okay and you don't know what is the way or what is the method to solve the problem it will be quite difficult for you to do so okay in the same way if i am trying to write a program which is totally new to me it is very difficult to get hold of it okay the point i am talking is about getting the logic of the program so this logic part exactly what it is all about okay so what i believe is logic can never be taught to you Okay, as you practice it will come to you okay so basically while writing algorithms we are going to see the different logic that will be used to create your programs okay so we'll define algorithms okay so i'm using a notepad and I, i'm going to share this document so don't worry about it at the end of the video i'll be putting a link for to download this document or you can directly contact me for this document okay i will be putting all the details and you just have to hit a subscribe button for me okay that is the list i can ask for okay. so basically we'll define algorithms so we'll write algorithms as sequential steps that is used to execute a program okay now if you take any language, algorithm becomes an integral part of it. So let's say you want to do code in Java, you want to do code in C, you want to do code in C++ or any language that you want, algorithm will play a very important part in that. So if you know algorithm, you can do coding in any language that is what I believe. Okay. Now this algorithm is having a particular rule or we will talk in a normal term, I will term it as DIP. DIPO which stands for depot rule. Okay, now what is this depot rule? D actually stands for declare, I stands for input, P stands for process, and O stands for output. Okay. So if you are considering any program or any workflow, your entire application will move around depot rule. Okay. So let's take an example where I want to make an application for user registration. Okay. So if you are talking it in terms of Java, the language can be any Java, Python or C, C++. Okay. So let's say I want to make an user registration program. What are the things that I need to declare? So basically I will be taking two things which you term it as variables. Okay. So I'll be declaring two things. One is username and the other is password. The input is what user is going to give you. Okay, so for that also, I will be taking input in the two variables that is username and password. What will be the process? The process will be to compare the username and password with the one that you actually are going to set. And the output will be either the user will logged in successfully or the user will enter invalid password. So basically this is all how an entire application goes okay so if you talk about any application it will follow this depot rule that is dipo where d stands for declare i stands for input p stands for process and o stands for output okay so uh, we, we will not go into a much deeper example let's take a simple example and let's see how to write an algorithm okay so we will term this as question number one where we will write an algorithm so i will term it as write an algorithm to add two 
numbers okay so very simple algorithm okay we just have to take two numbers and add two numbers and now we will compare how the dipo rule works okay that is the dipo rule so when i'm talking about the algorithm always starts in steps okay so the step one will always be start so it refers for you to starting for starting your application so whether you are doing code in java whether you are doing code in c whether you are doing code in dotnet it will not matter the step two is nothing but the declare okay so you have to declare certain things which can hold up the values so in my case i will declare two variables naming it as number one number two and sum which is initially equal to zero okay now the variable names here in this case can be any name that you want but i'm just trying to give logical names so that the entire program is understandable to you okay now after declare the third step or you can say after declare the part that comes taking input okay so for taking input we basically write something called as xm okay so first i have to accept number one okay so you have to use the same variable name there is no need for giving you semicolon by mistake i have put it next will be step four Okay, so you can do accept in two different steps and you have to do it as per the process you can take input in two different steps okay and you have to follow the process so basically the next part is accept number two okay the variable name should be same so i have done my two parts so i will just write check to understand that this part is done and i have even taken the input so it is also done the next part is to do the process the process is pretty pretty simple so in step 5 i want to add these two numbers so basically i will say number 1 plus number 2 okay so this is the process that i have to do right and after adding this i have to store it in another variable which i am going to use for output that is nothing but sum so i say sum equal to number 1 plus number 2 after this i will be creating step 6 so i will just write check after process and now my step 6 is nothing but displaying the output so to display the output you basically can use keyword known as display or you can use another keyword that is print anyone will do now what i have to print is nothing but sum so display or print sum and the program that i have started will end so for ending this program i am going to use something called as stop so this is the simple algorithm that you, that you can go with okay now we have to execute this algorithm okay so let's have number one we'll be having number two and we'll be having sum okay so i will say sum whose initial value i have put it as zero okay so let's say the number one value i am trying to put is 54 and number two value i'm trying to put it as 60. so see if, if i add 60 plus 54 this is going to give me 114. so basically when you take an output into the consideration the output screen will print the value as 114. so this is how your algorithm is going to execute okay so you just have to remember the steps that is declare input process and output you take any program and your entire program will go around this particular rule that is known as depot declare input process and output okay so this was the first example in the next video i am going to share all the operators that you are going to require to solve an algorithm exercise okay so see you guys in the next lecture and i hope you enjoyed the video so please don't forget to sub subscribe my channel and you'll be getting more videos on algorithms and the later one topic will start doing programming in C and we are going to see different types of programs. Also I am going to share you the importance of Java language in the coming videos. So just hit the subscribe button and